bless you. Sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with you. Yes. Okay. Yes. The Savior of mankind. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus came to die for us mm -hmm. and to deliver us from the hand of the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, this Jesus we're talking about is the Savior of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Especially those that will surrender their hearts to him as personal Lord and Savior. Okay. okay. Hmm. Wait a minute, my brother. Are you here to preach to us? So we are here to preach the gospel of Jesus. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. But um, we are Christians yeah, by yeah. the grace of God. Born uh, again. Uh, as uh, yeah. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, we thank God for that. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, but all, all the same, uh, can we still go ahead to tell you the message God laid in our heart? Mm. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Feel free. Okay. Uh, uh, because, you see, everybody is born again these mm. days. So. Mm. Everybody is born again. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm. This is love. Mm. God loves us first, that he gave the most precious thing he had, his only Son. Meanwhile, so many of us who claim to love the Lord are not ready to release anything to him. We deny him when we are faced with temptation and persecution. Mm. Many who profess to have given their heart to Jesus still indulge in sin and unrighteousness. Mm. They give their heart to pleasure and lawlessness of this world. Sir, Sir. Ma, to such people, the Lord Jesus will say, I do not know you. Mm. Mm. Even though they claim to be mm. born again, why? Eh, yeah. Yes. I want you to read a scripture. Mm. Matthew chapter 7, okay. verse 22 and 23. I want you to please listen. <coughs> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. Hmm. Hmm. If we claim to be born again, hmm. just like my sister said, then we need to regularly check to see if our ways please God. Because Jesus Christ is a jealous God. Hmm. He wants our totality. Hmm. I pray that the Lord will help us. Amen. 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 Thank you so much Amen. for that powerful message, my brother. Yes, wow. But like my darling has said, we are born again. Yes. Yes. In fact, I ought to have introduced our church to you because I pastor a church. Yes. yes. And my wife here is a pastor's wife and a teacher of the word. You are a pastor? Yes. Mm. And the uh, mommy pastor's wife. Exactly. Yes. Ah. It's by the grace of God. Ah. Yeah. We thank God. We thank God. <laughs> we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Yeah. I hope you are blessed with our short message. Ah, oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> the course. word is ever new. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Yeah. We thank God. Yeah. Can we pray together? Yes. Sure. Sure. Okay. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jesus. They said they are born. This is unbelievable. Ah. That that woman is a Christian and a pastor's wife. Oh. Ah. What is this word turning to? I mean, where is the place of the Holy Spirit? My dear, that's what is involved now. Ah, what are you saying? Is that what the Bible teaches us? That we should go into sin because we want to save sinners? Ah, I mean, Christianity is turning upside down. You know what? 
These people believe that that is the best way to attract the world to Jesus. God is a spirit, they say, and so he doesn't look at our physical appearance. Ah. <laughs> but we know that the word of God says that our body is the temple of the living God. Yes. And that a godly woman should dress moderately mm. to reveal the inner beauty. Can we now say because we want people to fill our church, our women should dress like our Lord? And you preach to them as if they are unbelievers. You didn't even know they are pastors. <laughs> anyway, I believe that is the way God wants it. Yes. And for me, that message should be a food for thought for them. For them. Mm. <clears throat> Just imagine. Look at the way that lady dressed. <sighs> In fact, my dear, when I was preaching to them, I, I cannot even look at her face I saw as you. I was preaching. <laughs> I saw you. And if the husband does not see anything bad oh. in the way that woman is dressing, dressing, now tell me, what do you think will become of the church members who are ladies who look up to this woman as their mentor? They will be wearing rags. Rags. Please. Please end this discussion. God himself will take care of this. Ah, ah they need prayers. We need to pray for them. Of course, we'll keep praying for them. Oh, oh my, my, my food is dead. Even though I'm not invited. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello. Ah, good afternoon, my sister. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank God you. God bless you. You're blessed. How? There's no problem. No, at all. Your car is blocking mine, and I'm on my way out. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about that. You're going shopping? No, I'm going for Bible study. Today is our Bible study service and I'm the teacher by the grace of God. God has given me that gift of teaching. <laughs> Alright, give me a few minutes. Alright, please. I need to get going on time. No problem. Thank you. The
Lorraine, why are you fetching water inside the basket? It can't retain any water, don't you know that? Moreover, this amounts to fruitless effort. Don't you know that? Ah, oh, no, sir. I'm not wasting it. Mm. I'm only applying wisdom. Wisdom? Yes, sir. Wisdom? How? By simply pouring this water into the basket, the water is able to flow on its own mm. to water the garden. Mm. So I don't need to stress myself going to water each plant individually. Mm. I see. Lorraine, can't you see the water is flowing in the same direction? It cannot go round the garden. You see, because it is flowing in the same direction, some of these plants will not be water. Come and see by yourself. Follow me, come and see. Now, look at this. Look at that one. Look at this. Some of these plants are not water. And if not water, they can dry up. Can't you see that? <laughs> but the water is still flowing anyhow. Someday it will get there. Lorraine, you are using the wisdom of men to run spiritual race. Don't you know what the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13? It says, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And they have healed us for themselves. Sisters, broken sisters that can hold no water. My dear, I, I can see you have been working hard. Yes. Well done. Yes, she's working very hard. But all the water she has labored to fetch is being poured inside the basket. Now listen to me, both of you. You cease to become blessing when you forsake the fountain of living waters. And you attend to your own ways, being guided by the, by the wisdom of this world. Now, let me advise you. Listen, let me advise you. Go back to your source and stop all this wasted and fruitless effort. Okay? My God, what could be the meaning of this dream? Ah, Lorraine, pouring water into a basket? No. And he said, he talked of fruitless effort. Ah, I reject that in Jesus' name. Ah, God, what is the meaning of this dream? Have mercy upon us. Show us where we have missed it. Open our eyes to the meaning of this dream, Lord. Lord have mercy on us, in the name of Jesus, show us mercy it's in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I reject every fruitless effort, it is not our portion. Father, open our eyes to see. Where we Good afternoon, sir. My sister, how are you? I'm fine, sir. You're blessed. Amen. Ah, we really thank God for your life, sir. Mm. Ah, I pray God will continue to increase His anointing upon your life, sir. Amen. Oh. Ah. So, how is my brother? Oh, he's very fine. Ah, your sermon on Sunday was something else. Oh, it was riba. <laughs> My husband and my children could not stop talking about it. You need to see how the heaven came down during the sermon on Sunday. Ah! More anointing upon your life, sir. Amen. <laughs> but, are you sure you were in church on Sunday? Oh, yes, yes, I was there. Though I came very late. But I still met your sermon. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Ah, but Sister Veronica. Your husband and your children were not in church. 
because brother Edwards, the men's leader, reported your husband to me that he has not been in church for more than two weeks now. So what is going on? Oh, did I say last Sunday? No, <laughs> no. I mean, um, last last uh, upper week Sunday, upper week Sunday, sir. Because I came late last Sunday, so it should be upper week Sunday. <laughs> upper week Sunday. <laughs> oh, great, sir. <laughs> Sister Veronica. <laughs> yes, sir. Why are you lying? Why are you covering unrighteousness? Who are you deceiving? Me? Or God? I told you your husband has not been in church for more than two weeks now. And you are lying. Who are you trying to impress? Me? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. You are sorry? Pastor, honestly, I'm tired of my husband. I don't know what came over him recently. He has stopped coming to church. He said he prefers going to clubhouse rather than coming to church. Do you know the worst part of it? The worst part of it is that he goes with my boys to this clubhouse. He will not even allow them to follow me to church anymore. Is this your same husband that enjoyed my message on Sunday? Ah, uh ah, -huh. Sister Veronica. Instead of exposing the work of the devil and seeking the Lord in prayer. And these children you are talking about as though they were kids. Are they not the same ones that will graduate from university next year? Pastor, please, you need to call him and talk sense into his head. I don't want him to destroy the lives of my children. My sister, you have homework to do. Yes. You have to sort yourself out before the Lord. Only then can He show us what to do about this situation. Homework? I don't understand. You don't understand? Sister Vero, you don't understand? Okay, I will explain to you. I can't imagine how you could open your eyes and watch things degenerate to this level in your home. Were you not living in the same house with this man? Were you not sleeping on the same bed? Yet you never sensed that things had gone wrong to this level. Because you have gone to sleep spiritually. You have become dense in the spirit. Sister Veru, you have to go before the Lord. Because you are the home builder. Sir, I can't imagine you are talking to me like this. Are you blaming me for my husband's wayward life? No, 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 no. I am not saying you are entirely at fault in this issue. But I am saying you have critical roles to play as the home builder. When there is a problem in the home, it is the home builder we call. We don't call the mechanic because the mechanic has his own area of specialization. If you don't sort yourself out before God, who is the real home builder? He cannot open your eyes to where the problem is. Nothing is wrong with me, Pastor. Nothing is wrong with me, Pastor. There is nothing wrong with me. He is the one that has some problems. Eh? Nothing is wrong with you? Hmm, okay. I will tell you the truth. Apart from the drama you just displayed here, eh? Lying and covering up. As I'm looking at you, hmm? You have problem. Pastor, have I offended you in any way? Even if I've offended you in any way, I still don't think I deserve this embarrassment from you, sir. I'm sorry if I've offended you, Sister Veronica. But, uh -uh. look at your appearance now. Look at yourself. You are the woman's leader for heaven's sake. Does this your appearance glorify God? Eh? With due respect, sir, I think you should look inwards and start from your home. 
if I'm making such comments to you. Excuse me. Maxwell. Maxwell. Maxwell, what is wrong with you? What have I done wrong? What did that lady do to you to deserve this embarrassment? Why did you why what did you insult her so much? Is it is it is it too much for me to correct my church member? My woman leader for that matter? Maxwell! You know well the role that this woman is taking in the church, especially among the women. God has been using her to calm and curtail the women in the church. Maxwell, listen to me well. God knows that I have been trying my best to be the best help me for you. But if you like, scatter the church with your own hands. Destroy it with your own hands. I won't be blamed. Because I don't know what your problem is. For the past few days, you've been going on mute. I ask you what is your problem, you don't answer me. Why don't you just pick your phone, call the woman, and ask her what we discussed? I of don't shout. need to call her. I overheard all your conversation. I was listening. You know what my advice is for you? Pick up your phone right now and call that woman. She hasn't gone too far. Call her and apologize. Apologize? Yes, tell her you're sorry. C can you hear yourself talk? Okay. God knows I am trying. God knows I'm being a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman that is supposed to build her own house with her own hands. God, I'm building my house. I am building it. But somebody is not allowing me to put the blocks well. Somebody is making my efforts. Futa, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. God knows. Everyone sees me. I'm a good help me. God knows I'm trying my best. Eh? God knows. Oh. God knows. Max. Max. Maxwell! What is wrong with you? What's eating you up? I've been here for some minutes and I've been calling your name and you're not responding. Did I offend you? No, oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. I've been thinking, that's all. Thinking? Thinking about what? You know it's the same thinking mode that got you talking to Sister Veronica the other day, that way. Actually, I've been thinking about us. Us? Yeah. What happened to us? I mean, you see, it baffles me that within just a week that we moved into this compound, our neighbors came here to preach through us. You know, thinking that we are unbelievers. Can you imagine that? Unbelievers! The couple innocently came here to preach salvation and message to us. Ugh. Oh, that? Well, it got me thinking too, but I've gotten over it. I've forgotten about it. I'm not bothered about it anymore. No, it's not funny. It's not. Rather, it should be thought provoking. It implies that there is something wrong with us. Eh? Lauren, we are not just Christians, you know. We are ministers of God. Okay, Maxwell, where is this conversation heading to? Now, this is where I'm heading to. Ever since we traveled to America, you've changed. She were not like this before, Lauren. Eh? My baby was not like this. You used to be humble. You used to, you used to dress moderately. Yeah, but ever since we came back, everything changed. Your dressing changed. Your behavior changed. Everything about you changed. Even your complexion changed. Hey! hey. Please, hold it. Ah, Maxwell, I knew this was where this conversation was heading. Oh, because one man just walked in here and said whatever he felt like saying. That has destabilized you. And besides, this man came here to preach the message of salvation. Not to talk about my dressing. And how has that become your problem? Look, point of correction. That man was not an ordinary man. He is a man of God. And he has the spirit of God in him. 
So for him to come here with his wife and minister salvation to us as unbelievers, we need to check ourselves. We need to check ourselves. Really? Yeah. All right. Do the thinking by yourself. I have other things to attend to. Lauren! Lauren! Your food is ready. Where are you going? Are you leaving me to eat alone? <laughs> when did that one start in this house? Since I became the sinner in this house, and you the saint, and I don't want to pollute the saint. Hey, my dear, are we not one? Even if you were wearing rags, you are still my wife. What? Excuse me, what did you just say? That I'm wearing rags? No, 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 don't misunderstand me. I said even if you were wearing rags, you're still my wife. You're still repeating the same thing. Am I wearing rags? Okay, now let, 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 me, let me just tell you my mind. Let me tell you the reason why I've been, I've been staying on my own for the past few days. Do you know that I find it difficult to correct many of the youngest in the church over the issue of their dressing? Simply because I know that they are patterning their dressing after you. You remember what Sister Veronica said here the other day I was trying to correct her. Even some time ago, an elderly woman came to meet me in the church during counseling hours, begging me to talk to you over this same issue. Why are you finding it difficult to change this lifestyle? You were not like this before I married you. All this began since we traveled to America. Hey, please, Maxwell. Please, what has come over you? Wait, the Christians in America, are they serving another God? Oh, maybe they are even all going to hellfire. Oh, maybe they even have two ends. <laughs> that is freedom, Maxwell. Freedom. Freedom to serve God and worship God the way you want to. And that is what I noticed about them. And I thought I should bring it back here. Have you checked their church attendance since we got back? The youth are trooping into the church. And you know why? Because they are attracted to my lifestyle. Yes, I know. I know they are attracted to your lifestyle. I also know that their number has increased more than before. Exactly. That's my point. And do you know what is attracting them? My way of dressing. If I don't dress this way, will they be attracted to the church? Now we hold two services on Sunday. Doesn't that count? Was it like that before? It's got freedom. Freedom, Maxwell. Jesus came to liberate us and not to put us in a cage. If it works for them in America, it can surely work for us here. My dear wife, this is not America. This is Nigeria. This is Africa where we place value upon our appearance. And besides, the Bible emphasizes modesty in the dressing of a woman. Oh, please, Maxwell. God is spirit. And whatever we do with our body is left to us. I'm sure you know that, right? Yes, I do. That is why he needs our body to fulfill his operations here on earth. That's why the Bible says our body is the temple of God. If he doesn't care about our bodies, he will not come in human form for the deliverance and salvation of mankind. I don't know what I've done. I mean, I don't know what I've done wrong. I don't know how I've offended God in this whole matter. And if you don't understand me, if you don't understand me, I know the God that I'm serving in truth and in spirit understands me. He does. But must we dress as a harlot to bring people to church? Are we bringing them to ourselves or to Christ? Imagine what we are still passing through, what we are still facing in the church, eh? where the choir leader raped his secretary. You remember what the grandmother of that lady told you that day? You can't just wave all these things away. You can't pretend that you didn't hear Lorraine. Pastor, hey. So what can we say to all this nonsense? 
in the house of God. Ah, this is an abomination, Pastor. I've never seen this in my life. During our own time, ah, when we first received this faith, things were not like this. Simon, what happened? And what came over you? Raping your secretary? I thought this guy was engaged. Yes, he is. That means he must have been doing the thing with his fiancée. Because I don't understand this. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I have not done it before, sir. <laughs> it is the devil. <laughs> Just help me to ask for forgiveness from God. It's not only God's forgiveness that you need. You also need your fiancée to forgive you. Wait, have you told us? No. No, no. Please help me. I don't know what came over me. What? You don't know what came over you? Or what are you saying? Were you blind when you were doing whatever you're doing with her? Or you were drunk? Or blindfolded? Wait, you want to bring the name of our church to, to disrepute in this society? Choir master? You're a dog. Dog! Nonsense. You know, for what you did, we're going to call the police on you. Oh, please, ma. And you're going to get punished for what you have done. Yes. Bring a shame to our church. Oh, no. Total so, so disgrace. Please, ma. Nonsense. Oh, I don't know what came over me. Please. You don't know what came over you. Mama. Mama, please. We are very sorry for what has, what has transpired between them. Hmm. We seriously apologize. Mama. Do you know that this has never happened in our church before? But you have seen one now. Simon, follow me outside. Mama, please excuse me. Now tell me, what actually <coughs> happened? Eh? What came over you? Hmm? These were girls that we put under your care. Eh? And, the, and the rest of them are they saved at all? So, Simon, what exactly happened? I mean, what came over you? These girls were kept under your care as the choir master for heaven's sake. Eh? Are the rest of them safe with you at all? Sir, I'm sorry, sir. It is the devil. When she came to my house to come and give me the report of the last query, Aza, I couldn't resist her. She came to your house? Yes, sir. Ah. The clothes she was wearing was so revealing and captivating. The moment I set my eyes on her, another spirit took hold of me. All my defense mechanisms were broken down. And she was explaining things. I've gone far to the world of lost. Then she said she wanted to use my toilet. Use your toilet? Yes, sir. Ah. I didn't know what came over me. I, immediately as she was coming out of the toilet, I carried her into my room. Ah, sir, that was what happened, sir. So you raped her, sir. It is the devil. Ah. It is the devil that used me. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Ah. But, but, but what, Simon? But what? Ah, you a whole choir leader. Eh? But why didn't you flee from her? The way Joseph fled from Potiphar's wife in the Bible. Eh? If not that you were already engulfed with lust. Where to? The only thing happened in my house. I didn't know where to run to, sir. Shut up your mouth. Shut up. Just, just hear yourself talk. Now, what do you want your fiancé to say when she hears of this? Tell me. I know I've sinned against you and God. Save me to... To ask for forgiveness from God and also from my fiancé. Sir, sincerely, I love her. I love my fiancé. I love her. And we have never done this before. 
Fred, let's go, follow me. <laughs> Mama, please, we are very sorry. Please forgive us. Eh? And I want to specially appreciate you for the wisdom and maturity with which you've handled this issue. And you have not allowed, allowed it to blow out. Mm. Thank you. Mm. And I want to assure you that this young man will be severely punished for what he has done. Yes, Mama. This one, he will sleep in jail. I promise you. Mama, take me by my word, though. As the pastor's wife here, ha, I don't condole in discipline. This one, it is police. Murder. Please sit down. What well, was police in this case? Uh, Mama, please forgive us. Eh? Tito. Please forgive us, okay? Uh, we will deal with him. Oh. We will deal with him. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah, master. Please excuse us. Excuse us. Excuse. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I think looking at me now, I'm old enough. To give back to your wife, ah, sure, our sir. mother and mistress. Yes, Please help us. Our mother and mistress. Please help us. Several times I've warned this girl. You see what she will. So stop wearing this rag they call cloth. This rag. This rag. They call her clothes. But she be referring me to our mother in history. Ah, Mama, please, oh, these are the future. You are the model, you are the one they copy. We don't have anything to tell them. They will refer us back to Mama. Please, please, change your dress, change your lifestyle. Pastor, I'm sorry to say this, but that is the situation. That is what is going on in our house. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Pastor. God will help us. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. What? Why won't the spirit of lust have a nice time in the church of God? When our ladies and women dress so seductively to the house of God. Oh, you can blame the men. You can say, why don't they look away? But remember that these men are still men. They are still flesh and blood. Many of them are still struggling, trying to stand firm in the Lord. Many more are battling with lust in their hearts. And so, when these provocatively dressed ladies walk around in the church, the fuel, the lust, and the immorality in the hearts of this man. Remember the other time, I had to tell you to, to remove a lady that was sitting on the front row, right in front of the altar, revealing everything that should be covered. I had to tell you to help me to remove her. You could say, hey, Pastor, why didn't you look away? But remember, I'm still a man, darling. I'm still a man. Now, if I as a pastor could feel that way, how much more the ordinary church members? Maxwell, it can happen anywhere. There's no perfect church. And besides, our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. I know. That I know. But not when the Holy Spirit keeps pointing our attention to this issue. We packed into this house and not up to a week. Our neighbors came here to preach salvation to us, thinking that we are unbelievers. Unbelievers, can you imagine? The Holy Spirit also told me in the dream that we should be careful of fruitless efforts and so that our labors will not be in vain. I don't know why you find it so difficult 
to live this worldly lifestyle, Lorraine. Look at the woman next door, for heaven's sake. Isn't she a Christian just like you? That's what the Bible calls moderacy. Go back to your first love, Lorraine. I'm praying for you. Maxwell, so why are you talking to me like this? Because the Lord made it clear to me that we have hurt and grieved His Spirit. We cease to be blessings the moment we neglected the fountain of living waters and tended towards our own ways. The Lord said we cannot get to the next level He has in mind for us except we deny ourselves and lay all upon the altar. We can do it, Lauren. We can. Okay. But at least you eat your food, right? No. I'm not eating. I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I'll be ministering tonight. Hmm? Let's pray before I go. Father, help us. Be merciful to us. in my room. How did you get here? Lorraine. Why are you allowing all these idols in your life? Idol? I'm not an idol worshipper. I serve the living God, my Lord Jesus Christ. This lifestyle of yours is getting hold of you. You are becoming an idol worshipper since you don't even care about the souls and life committed into your hands. It is written, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry not be blamed. Are you not giving offenses? Is the ministry not being blamed? Wait, it's called liberation. We are liberating the youths, encouraging them to come to the Lord as they are. We need to draw them away from the world. They need to come to the church where they can be comfortable to serve the Lord just the way they are. They don't need to go to the world to catch any phone. We want to make the church comfortable for them. Yes. But Christ expected them to grow as they walk with Christ. But people like you hinder them from getting perfected by the Lord. Remember it is written. Everything is lawful. But not everything is beneficial. Everything is lawful. But not Everything is there defined. Sir, I know you are probably talking about my lifestyle, maybe the way I dress. But sir, honestly, I hate being caged. I love my freedom. I like wearing what I'm comfortable wearing. And besides, my spirit does not condemn me, so I'm fine. Christianity is not about you alone, but about others. Because Christ did not come because of himself, you know. But he came. For people. Your life should reflect the glory of God. That is why it is written. Either you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. But I love the Lord with all of my heart. And I believe that many will come unto the Lord if only I can bring myself down to their level. This is how the name of the Lord can be glorified. Can the glory of God manifest through sin when you deliberately go into the sin of Jezebel? Ah! Sin of Jezebel? Yes! With your attire of a harlot, you drag on the floor the glory of God. You prevent the Lord's sanctuary. You desecrate his altar. Ah! I serve the living God. And I am his servant. Why are you talking to me like this? Because God is not happy with you. And he's not happy seeing all these little ones being derailed and captured by the world through your careless living. Do you want to wait for his judgment to come before you do the right thing? Open your Bible to the book of Matthew. Chapter 18, verse 6. But 
whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That is the judgment. That is the verdict. But God is a merciful God. That is why he's calling you to come back to your first love before it is too late for you. Because God is not happy with you. And he's not happy seeing all these little ones being derailed and captured by the world through your careless living. Do you want to wait for his judgment to come before you do the right thing? Are you not giving offenses? Is the ministry not being blamed? But God is a merciful God. That is why he's calling you to come back to your first love before it is too late for you. God forgive me. <laughs> Don't let me let the ministry be blamed. God forgive me. But but you with him. But you with him six. Don't forgive me. Sing. Sing. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones? Which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he was drowned in the depth of the sea. Ah! Ah! God! Ah. Have mercy on me! Have mercy on me! Ah. Ah. So I've been derailing people. Hey! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Ah! So I need to sacrifice my life to others. Ah! God, I'm sorry. I didn't know. God, don't be angry with me. Don't let my service for you be in vain. I didn't know. How is everything at home there? Fine, we thank God. How was your ministration? Ah, I give glory to God. It was awesome. I'll be coming home tomorrow. Mm, I just wanted to hear your voice. I've missed you. Thank you. Ah, baby, what's happening? You're sounding so cold. Are you okay? No. No, I no, I mean I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm fine. It's nothing. I'm I'm fine, I'm fine. No, 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 no. Tell me, what is it? What is it? Okay, it's nothing serious. I just had an encounter with God. That's, that's all. Wow, an encounter. Ah, that's good. Uh, okay, what did the Lord say? Honey, it's personal. Hmm? Just forget it. It's nothing serious. Uh-oh. Tell me now. Tell me now. Honey. Till tomorrow. Okay, oh, okay. Alright. See you tomorrow. Alright, bye. Sweet dreams. Thank you. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. How was your administration? Oh, thank God. It was awesome. You're looking fresh. Oh. You're looking fresher too. <laughs> oh. oh, please, my manners. Let me get your food. No, come, 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 come. I'm not eating yet. What? I'm not taking anything now. Oh, okay, okay. At least you go upstairs and take a shower and you come back and we'll discuss. I'll do that. But first, there is something important, something urgent. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay. Tell me now. What? Uh -uh. What did the Lord speak to you during the revelation you had? The encounter now. 
Oh, yes, please, please, please. I told you, it's personal. Personal? Hmm, you're not serious. Ah, look, the message could be for me. You know we are one now. Eh? The Lord could speak to you, he could speak to me. So, come on, out with it. Okay, but only on one condition. Ah, oh, okay, 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 what is it? All right, I've taken my time to prepare a delicious meal for you. Mm. So, you first have to take your food, then I'll see if I can tell you. Okay, okay, and only one condition too. Okay. We're gonna eat together. What is it? I'm fasting. Eh? Fasting? Ah, no, 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 no. I, you can't fast now. You can't be fasting. Ah, when I've just arrived. Ah, no, no, no. Really? Uh huh. But yesterday you were here. <laughs> when you went on a fast without informing me. No, 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 no. That was different. Do you know why? Why? You and I have a very. That one was different. Okay. You know why? Why? You and I have a powerful ministration in that bedroom right now. <laughs> okay, man of God, mm -hmm. with all humility, yeah. I am begging you, please let me conclude my fast. Then tomorrow, let's see how that powerful ministration will go. Ah, oh, 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 oh. Mm. Okay, okay. I agree. You agree? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go with this. All right. Going on here? Like what? Your your dressing? <laughs> okay. Is something wrong with my dressing? Wrong with it? No. Everything is right with it. Ah! Now I get it. I get what you meant by the encounter. The encounter. Yes, I saw him. He spoke to me. Even though he was not happy with me, he still showed me mercy. My pastor. I'm very sorry for all my past errors, my past mistakes. Please. Get your, get your baby. You see, my dear, we have all missed it at one time or the other. I too didn't have this understanding until the Lord opened my eyes to it. No wonder. I saw a difference in the atmosphere the moment I walked through that door yesterday. Hey, <laughs> our mother in Israel, I thank God for your submission and sacrifice. <laughs> submission. That's the word. I discovered that there is a need for sacrifice. No matter how little it is for us to lay down our body on the altar for the Lord, for Him to use it to reach out to save lives and to save the world. Hmm. I thank God for His mercies. Hallelujah. God is good. Stand up, stand up. Let me look at you again. <laughs> wow. You look good. <laughs> I love your appearance. Aww. And I know God is happy with it. So. Oh, well, it's all for God's glory. And you know, I am his minister. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to represent him well. And because we're a pastor's wife too. Exactly. <laughs> oh, we thank God. Honey, yeah. church is calling. Don't let's waste time talking here. Let's go. I will let's wait, go. wait, wait, wait. Come. Come. What? Come. Come here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for obeying the Lord. Mm. I appreciate you. Mm. I love you.
Let he who thinks he stands Let him take it lest he falls Even if he thinks he's right Lord, I surrender my all I can do this on my own Watchfulness is not enough I know I'm not qualified But Lord, I surrender my all Let he who thinks he stands Let him take it lest he falls Even if he thinks he's right Lord, I surrender my all I can't do this on my own Watchfulness is not enough I know I'm not qualified Lord, I surrender my all Instead of living and struggling, falling down in the tumbling, take away all the suffering. Lord, I surrender my all. Give me speed when I run. Give me strength when I climb. Give me lift so I can fly. Lord, I surrender my all. Instead of living and suffering, falling down and tumbling, take away my suffering. Yeah.